Hello friends, welcome back. Now in this video, let's talk about how do I find a problem for my project? This is a big billion dollar question for undergraduate students, for postgraduate students and even for PhD scholars. So though our curriculum teaches us more about the solutions, we are not exposed towards finding an appropriate problem for our project. So the video focuses on how do I start, where do I begin my journey to identify a suitable problem for my project. Please remember, identification of a suitable problem is key to success. Let's get into the details. So when do you say that it is a good problem? Right? Where do I start? How do I say that this is a good problem or not a good problem? Right. Let me bring two dimensions here. One is problem space. So when I say problem space, what are the things that you need to look into? Number one. What is the challenge that we have to address? So in case if you are doing a, ma a machine learning or a deep learning kind of a project, do I have enough data to train my machine learning or a deep learning model? These are the two primary questions that you need to ask. The problem space is nothing but what of the challenges and why you need to solve that problem and the second dimension is the solution space why i am trying to bring two different spaces let me tell you right whenever you want to say that you are trying to do a good problem the novelty should be there either in the problem space or in the solution space novelty in the problem space is maybe like there are some methodologies which are being applied in some other fields and that you want to apply it for a new problem, right? So that can become a good problem statement. Say example, um, segmentation is one popular thing that we do in all image processing applications. But if I do it in order to cluster some nanoparticles, so I'm trying to transfer my known solution to a new problem. Hence, that is where novelty can be brought to your project. On the other hand, solution space. The solution space is, will be dealing with what are the existing solutions already. This primary is the driver driving question which is trying to help us to understand with why there is another project required in this field that is a driving question, right? So you need to focus on what is the existing, what are the existing solutions not able to address? Will I, will my project, a new project be able to better the existing results or provide an alternative to the existing solutions? Right. So these questions will help us to select an appropriate problem for us. Problem space. Um, solution might not be a novel, but applying the existing solutions to a new problem can add a dimension to your problem. On the other hand, I have a enough improvement space in order to elevate the existing solutions. In both the dimensions, your problem can become a good problem. Maybe in the UG level, undergraduate level, um, if there is existing solution and applying it to a new problem and showcasing what are the results is considered to be a good problem. But in case if you are a PhD scholar or doing your post-graduation or post-doctoral, in such case, if you are able to bring novelty in the problem space and more solution, more of the solution space, then it would be an excellent problem. So this is how you decide whether the given problem is a 
worth to solve or not. Now, so having said with, I have a good problem in my hand, where do I begin with? The first number, step number one is select. Probably you can start with the point where, uh, no, I want to do some project in the area of, say, suppose education, right? Some examples have been given. So you can broadly select the field at least. So to begin with, say, I'll say like, I want to do a project where ML solutions, ma machine learning solutions needs to be given into the field of education, agriculture, healthcare, or automotive, you can at least this, at least you can select this broader area based on your interest. Don't get biased with what your friends are doing. You can just select based on what is your team or what as an individual that you are interested with. Maybe I have given a couple of examples here. One is education, right? So can I predict the whether the student will get placed or not? Will, get, will they get job um, or not? based on the history of their performance in the students. Can I do that? Right. Second one is, though these are older projects, I just wanted to give you a feel like how does um, a problem statement can emerge out from a broader field. Right. Plant disease detection. Though we have enough algorithms, though enough research has been carried out, but still people say that there is enough scope in the field of agriculture as well. Right. So like this, Select some domain. All right. So once I select a domain, how do I proceed? All right. Step number two is use ChatGPT or ask your supervisor about the top five, top ten conferences or journals in the area that you have selected. Say so example, education. If you select, right. So some are some of the typical conferences that happen in India. Right. T4E. Technology for Education, which is very popular in India. And similarly, ICTIE, International Conference on Transformations in Engineering Education. And there are some journals like JEET, JEET, right, JEE, IEEE, TOE, Transaction on Education, then Research and Practice in Technology Enhanced Learning. These are the very popular conferences and journals that we have. Right, example, if you take vision and pattern recognition, we have very top-notch conferences like CVPR and a Q1 journal like TPAMI, right? So, which are the uh, considered to be the top conferences and journals, right? So, step number two, we are identifying a set of conferences and journals. You can do this with the help of ChatGPT or you can ask your seniors or supervisors. And then, how do we proceed again? So, step number three is, go to the recent proceedings of identified conferences or journals or the websites of a journals or some of the conferences have their own websites. So, you can visit there, look into the recent proceedings, right? So, there are two angles. There are two kinds of papers that you may have to refer. Number one is recent papers. So, the recent papers will help you to understand how the there is a change in the problem space as well as the solution space. This will give you a broader understanding of how do I pitch in, how do I uh, select a problem. Okay, So, this will help you to understand the current trend, where is the research direction, um, where is the entire world moving towards. The recent papers will help you to identify that. But on the other hand, there are set of papers called as survey papers, right? So, which will help you to understand the important milestones and the state of art methods, right? When I say state of, of art methods, that means they are the best methods that are existing uh, till now, right? So, you will find two kinds of papers, right? Recent papers will help you to understand where, in which direction the research is moving. And the second one is the survey papers will help you to get the breadth of the knowledge in the particular domain or the problem. This is very, very important step. You may have to identify um, one or two papers. How do you identify one or two papers? Maybe re read the titles of the papers. You need not get into the details of the papers right now. 
So you can read the titles of the papers, abstracts of the paper from the identified conferences or journals. Right. That is step number three. Right. So choose two or three papers which interest you and talk to your supervisor, mentor, senior to finalize the problem for your project. Right. So maybe broadly. So if you follow all these steps, it will help you to identify um, very broadly. You may not be able to arrive at the objectives of your project or uh, key performance indicator of your project. That's OK. But uh, till here, you will be able to identify the broader problem for your project. Right. So that's all for this video. OK. Um, and the further, I'll give you a link of our other video where you can uh, think of how do we search papers, right? What are the important components of a paper, right? See you in the next video. Thank you.